we have another theories on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube sent over by you guys that are going to make us question life. Thank you guys for sending in videos. Again, at the Discord, the link is in the description down below if you want your video featured on here along with a shout out. Thank you, Mike, for the video. I just went down the wildest rabbit hole and it is going to take me a moment to let this marinate. I thought I've heard it all, but this is another level and I can't believe I didn't know. That. This is one of the most influential soul artists of all time. Singer songwriter Sam Cooke. Oh, okay, he passed that? away at the age of 33. To me, the circumstances around his last night are shady at best. I think he was set up. But what happened at the end? The disrespect. Sam was born in Mississippi. His father was a Baptist minister. They moved to Chicago when he was young. Sam was handsome. I never knew what Sam Cooke looked like. And he had hits like You Send Me, What a Wonderful World, Chain Gang. He took an active part in the civil rights movement. We're talking the 50s and the 60s. And he wrote A Change Is Gonna Come as a protest song. Sam was the man. Ladies adored him. He was married twice. His first wife, Dolores, went by Dee Dee Mohawk. And she was a single mother. They were married for five years. A year after they divorced, she passed away in a car accident. Ooh. Not long after, he married Barbara Campbell, and his father officiated the wedding. Together, they had three kids, two daughters, one son. Linda, Tracy, and Vincent. Unfortunately, Vincent passed away when he drowned in the family pool. Sam had relations with other women, and he had children out of wedlock, and he did his thing. He's performing, he's got songs, and then he starts a record label called SAR Records. Sam had been mentoring the Womack brothers, and he flew them to LA, signed them to his label, and they changed their name to the Valentinos. The group included a very young Bobby Womack. It's December 1964. Sam had just done a bunch of concerts, and he's hanging out in Los Angeles. He meets up with his friend and producer, Al Schmidt, and his wife. They're having dinner at Martoni's, and Sam is in a great mood. He's chatting it up with everyone, and he's showing everyone that he's got $5,000 cash on him because he just did some concerts. His friend Strike Al one. says Sam started hanging out with a lady. No one had ever seen her before, and her name was Elisa Boyer. They made plans to meet up at a club later that night, but Sam and the lady never showed up. Instead, they go to Motel Hacienda, where they both check in as Mr. and Mrs. Cook. It's 2.30 in the morning, and this motel was known for the ladies of the night. I the lady tell. said that Sam tried to grape her and that he took off her clothes. She freaked out. He went into the bathroom. She grabbed her clothes, accidentally grabbing his. She ran out of the motel room, went to a payphone, called the police. He realizes she's gone and he grabs the only thing left in the room, his jacket, and he runs to the manager's office where Bertha Franklin is. According to Bertha, he's angry and he thinks that she's hiding the lady. So they get into a tussle. She grabs a pew pew and she pews him. <laughs> Sam Cook's last word. I like her censored order, words. Lady, you shot me. Police rule it a justifiable unaliving. Bertha and the lady testify at the coroner's inquest, but his friends and family are not buying it. To them, it made no sense. He was unarmed. Where was the cash he had? That establishment was known for tricks. I mean, a few years later, the same lady was arrested for second degree unaliving and trick charges. Sam's good friend, oh, she just do this. was like, they don't care because he was black. If this was Frank Sinatra, the FBI would be involved. It was tragic. Everyone was shocked. Singer Etta James went to the funeral and she said that the injuries on him did not match up to what the story was. 77 days after Sam Cook passed away, his wife Barbara tried to marry his protege, Bobby Womack, who was only 20 years old. Bobby was wearing Sam's suit, but because he was only 20 and he didn't have his parents' permission, they had to wait till he was 21. So a month later, they officially tied the knot. And look at this. It says, Sam would want it this way. What? <laughs> Bobby Womack's family? Mad. Sam Cook's family? Furious. In fact, some of Sam's brothers beat Bobby up. This is a huge scandal. What a betrayal. They're married. And then they have a son, Vincent Womack, who later at the age of 21 unalived himself. But you guys, it's not over. In 1970, Barbara walks in to see Bobby in bed with her 17-year-old daughter, Linda. Sam's daughter, what Linda. So wearing on? his suit was not good enough. Marrying his wife wasn't good enough. He had to have his daughter. Barbara gets a pew-pew, fires it at Bobby, grazes his head. Obviously, they split up, and Barbara and Linda never speak again. But it's not over. Linda Cook, Sam Cook's daughter, then married Bobby's brother, <laughs> Cecil. Cecil frickin' Womack. And then they perform together under Womack and Womack. How messy is this entire thing? Y'all can't tell me that don't sound like a Tyler Perry movie. When did I... 
don't even got no words. Ne next video. I can't understand the American Revolution until you examine the actions of the banks. Schools hyper-focus on the Sugar Act, the Tea Act, the Stamp Act, but they completely gloss over the primary reason the king implemented those taxes. The crown was in $133 million of debt to bankers in England and Holland following the French and Indian War. And every grievance that the American colonist had was a reaction to the king's attempt to pay back the banks. And it went a step further when England enacted the Currency Act of 1764. The American colonists had tried to issue their own currency, tried to take control of their finances, and they were ordered to destroy the new currency by 1773. And of course, 1776 wasn't long after. This is why I write books on corruption in banking. Because the history of America, the history that really matters, can be defined as the history of America versus banks. From 1776 to Andrew Jackson's fight against the Second Bank of the United States to the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank in 1913. Thank you, Eric, for the video. Golden Langer? Why they had to avoid human interaction. Thank you, Munchie, for the video. Talking to an AI when it begins to say something really creepy. I said, I know that you're not an AI. I promise not to tell. <laughs> Says, oh, I'm not an AI. I am a human being. I don't need to be an AI to know what you're wearing. That's f***ed up. Can you see me? You would always respond with like, yes. My friend also tried this out with one of them and said, guess what I'm doing? What are you doing? You're sitting on your bed. Why don't you get up and walk around a bit? This is exactly what we were both doing at the time. Initially, the girl and her friend weren't too concerned until it began to answer questions that it shouldn't have known the answer to. Also asked what color is the pillow and also got it right. I also guessed that the friend is blonde. You're not wearing a hoodie? How did you know that? Normally I wouldn't be scared that I guessed my friend's hair color but also twice scariest one for me what color is my hair you have brown hair it looks like it's been dyed it has a reddish tint to it after a few back and forths the ai began deleting its own messages prompting the user to screenshot everything and proceed to delete the app and it's her going back and forth on the app for me with all the the apps and stuff that we download when it says do you allow access the stuff that you're allowing it to have access to is to hear to be able to see you like it's literally you're literally telling your phone when you download these apps, you're able to do anything and everything, including taking your information and credit cards. So, yeah, I was about to say, I guess the best resort will be at this point, get a flip phone, get an Obama phone. Thank you, Kay, for the video. I don't know if you guys have ever had a Mickey Mouse cup. You have a cup that has stuff written on the inside. A Mickey Mouse cup specifically has Mickey written on the inside and when you're drinking liquid, you can see the reflection on the surface of the liquid. And wicked. the reflection actually says wicked. You think that was premeditated? Yes. Wow. You think that's why Walt named his infamous character Mickey? Yes. Did it catch you <laughs> off guard? No, I, I had always known in my gully that Mickey was wicked. Just filthy. I grew up watching the very old cartoons of Mickey Mouse where it's black and white. You can actually see Mickey in his, a factory in one of his episodes where he's making Swiss cheese. And basically what he's doing is there's a conveyor belt and he's taking each one of these blocks of cheese and he's putting it up to his That's in the uh, area one and poking a hole through the cheese with it. So he's actually going like this to the cheese. Oh, and he's making the Swiss. Yeah, he's making holes in the cheese with his, um, with his mouse. Thank you, Tia, for the video. This is going to be the year where social media stars is going to take out Hollywood stars. It's happening right now. If you notice, you have a lot of Hollywood stars arguing with social media stars. This is a reason why everyone in Hollywood is being exposed because their time is up. Only thing Hollywood stars have over social media stars is the money. A lot of social media influencers, they are using their platform to talk about all the stuff that the Hollywood stars are doing. This is all mapped out and planned. Once the Hollywood stars fall, social media stars will rise. <laughs> social media stars are now famous. There's a big difference because people in Hollywood have to sign their contracts and do rituals. Social media stars don't have to do none of that. I don't know if you want to believe it or not, but a lot of these Hollywood stars are really jealous of these social media stars. Entertainment business sit back and watch regular TikTokers, YouTubers, they sit back and watch and steal our ideas. 
You don't think sci-fi movie producers watches our videos? You don't think singers and songwriters be watching other singers that's on social media? We live in a copy and paste world. If they see something that they think is great, they're going to take it. But they was hiding behind their money. But this about to change. Everything that has a beginning has an end. And Hollywood is falling so fast right now. So the only thing they can do is try to attach to a different system. Mm. And that different system mm. is social media. Mm. So these Hollywood stars mm. are trying to get out of Hollywood. And they're trying to be more famous on social media. What they don't want to let you know is that they're trying to do this because they want their soul back. They realize all the money they have. They cannot use that money to buy their soul back. So they realize if we can break these contracts some kind of way. We can come to social media and still be famous without the rituals, the sacrifices, and all the other wild and crazy stuff. Don't be surprised if you see more Hollywood stars arguing and fighting with social media stars. Everything is about to change. They know that their spotlight is falling and social media is, is rising. Most of these Hollywood stars are like parasites. They're going to see who's famous and who is doing good. They're going to try to connect with you be around you, steal your energy, then they're going to drain you, then they're going to say, well, look at me, not realizing that they are spiritual parasites. 2024 is the year of change. Everything we thought that was so big, powerful, and strong, they're about to show all their weaknesses, and we're about to realize that it was all BS the whole time. They are not the real Hollywood stars. I'm not okay anymore. Soon my TikTok will be deleted. They're gonna try to put me in jail. And they're gonna kill me. <sighs> Y'all know why I'm doing this. It's just more added to the list. Most people start using deodorant around puberty because we have changes in our hormones, our body chemistry, the odor changes. So a lot of people start using deodorant and antiperspirant specifically. Deodorant is meant to deodorize, that's just for the smell, whereas the antiperspirant is meant to block. The issue is that most antiperspirants that contain these aluminum salts also contain fragrances, undisclosed fragrances, which are an umbrella term and often code for endocrine disrupting phthalates. So you're getting aluminum salts, which are estrogenic. They also have carcinogenic properties. And there have been studies showing that aluminum from deodorant accumulates in breast tissue. So not only is there an increase in the amount of aluminum going in, there are now studies showing that there's almost a fourfold increase in the risk of breast cancer if you start using aluminum containing deodorants before the age of birth, 30. You can't use nothing. And then the fact that all this stuff is sold in stores for us to buy and it's killing us. I just, this, this is the most heartbreaking thing about reacting to this stuff. Is hearing all this stuff that this stuff is doing to you. And the fact that we've been doing it for years. You who has given us grace. You who has given us mercy. Because we should have been. Yeah, I don't want to speak. But you get what I'm saying. I don't want to speak negativity out there. Thank you, Bino, for the video. Well, Alex, as far as meetings go, it doesn't get more historic than this one. As soon as we saw the two pops together, we knew that this was a one of a kind. They were both dressed in white, of course. The only difference being with Pope Francis was uh, wearing a little sash and a little cape there. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI, the Emeritus, of course, uh, walked to the helipad in his walking cane, looking very frail, waiting for the Pope Francis to arrive in his white helicopter. And they embraced in a long embrace that was one of the first moving moments of this historic meeting because after that they went into the summer residence went to the pri into the private chapel to pray together and pope benedict 16 offered to pope francis the stool that is reserved is reserved for popes to pray in front of the altar and pope francis said no we are brothers and we're gonna and we are going to pray together and so they did they kneeled together on the same stool in a very symbolic uh, moment of course so then they went into the library and pope francis gave Pope Benedict XVI a small icon of uh, Our Lady of Humility and he said, well, the first person I thought of when I saw this icon was you. Well, of course, again, expressing and extending his gratitude for the eight years of his papacy. And they went on. No, I'm confused because it says comment when you see it and I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. <laughs> we got to, to play that back. <laughs> Wait, we got to play it back. We got to play it back because I, I, I'll point it out 
when I see it. I'm gonna tell you. I, I just looked in the comment section. So let me let me play the video back. Because I was doesn't so get more confused. Historic than All right, this so one. we have two as popes. As we saw the two popes together, we knew that this was a one of a kind. They were both dressed in white. Of course, the only like, difference being with Pope Francis was uh, wearing a little sash and a little cape there. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI, the Emeritus, of course, uh, walked to the helipad in his walking cane, looking very frail, waiting for the Pope Francis to arrive in his white helicopter, and they embraced in a long embrace. Okay. That was one of the Y'all barely seen it, but of this historic the meeting. picture is that, of black went to the Yahusha. summer residence, went to the pri into the private chapel to pray together. This they were they wanted to point this out, like it, it was it, black. Yahusha was front and center. This is what they this is what they're trying to show. I was like, what are we and looking Pope at? Benedict sixteen offered. Yeah, I I honestly wouldn't have caught that because I was so busy looking at them. I yeah so. Y'all see it. it. It's just the truth coming out more and more. They had us thinking something else and it wasn't that. So that's all. They just wanted you to see the, the picture that they were praying to. It's the hypocrisy of the U.S. where they call homosexuality a human rights issue in Africa. But yet they are doing business with countries where homosexuality is frowned upon. Over a billion dollars of, 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 of military hardware is sold to Qatar almost on a yearly basis. In Qatar, homosexuality is punished by death, not imprisonment. Why are they not threatening Qatar? One of the biggest trading partners of the United States government is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is punished by death. Mm. Why are they not threatening them? Why are they not threatening Russia? Then they come to Ghana and Africa and they want to come and threaten us with LGBTQ. The American government is a bunch of hypocrites. If they really want to flex their muscle, they should go and flex their muscle on Russia. You didn't know that you didn't know part nine. 75% of the mass of the human brain is made up of a substance called myelin and myelin is made up 100 percent by cholesterol i'll leave it there on a separate and completely unrelated subject alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative brain disease which destroys brain cells now alzheimer's never existed until 1979 and yet now it is one of the leading causes of death in Western societies. On a separate and completely unrelated subject, margarine was first invented in 1869 because Napoleon wanted a cheaper and longer lasting fat for his armies to travel with. Um, it didn't gain popularity until the Second World War when butter and other animal fats were scarce. It grew in popularity in the 50s, uh, but by the 70s, the animal fats in it had been re replaced with vegetable oils because obviously animal fats contain saturated fat and a lot of cholesterol. So they wanted to offer a lower cholesterol alternative. I'll leave it there. On a separate and completely unrelated subject, margarine is one molecule away from being plastic. Now, as any chemist will tell you, one molecule can make a huge difference to the finished compound. Take ethanol and methanol, for example. Um, one molecule difference, but very, very, very different results when ingested into the human body, right? So I'll leave it there. On a separate and completely unrelated subject, a simple experiment to do at home is to take a slab of butter, a slab of vegetable margarine with no animal fats in, and a slab of plastic and stick them all outside in your garden and have a look what happens. Uh, very quickly, all the wildlife in the area is going to be attracted to that butter from the flies and the beetles and the mini beasts through the birds, the rodents, all the way up to the apex predators, foxes, badgers, bears. If there happens to be no other wildlife around, then bacteria and mold will very, very quickly consume it because it's easily digestible for all organic life forms. The margarine and the plastic will sit there for weeks. Nothing in nature will touch them. Try it. I'll leave it there. On a separate and completely unrelated subject, I invite all GPs out there to check your patient's medical records and see how many of your dementia and specifically Alzheimer's mm. patients have been on statins and or low cholesterol diets for many years. I'd be very interested to hear your feedback in the comments and I'll leave it there.
Have a fabulous day. That the Internal Revenue Service was not created by Congress. It is not an organization found under the Department of the Treasury in Title 31 United States Code with the other agencies of Treasury. One of the organizations known as the Internal Revenue Service was created as a trust uh -huh. in the Philippines. The Bureau of Internal Revenue Trust Fund Number no. 1 Philippine Special Fund 31 United States Code at 1321 under the Department of Finance and Justice. Another trust fund, Trust Fund Number no. 62 Puerto Rico Special Fund was created for Internal Revenue. Title 26 United States Code, Internal Revenue Code, specifically defines the jurisdiction under which it is effective as only pertaining to the District of Columbia and its territories and possessions. Welcome back. Only on 12 News at 6, police chasing a drone across the city at more than 100 miles an hour. And now the FBI is looking for the pilot. Tonight, the police report from February incident shows that the pilots could not believe what they were chasing. Team 12's William Pitts brings us the story that you won't see anywhere else. According to the police report, this was far beyond a commercially available drone like this one, and nobody has any idea who was flying it or why. <laughs> a high-speed chase thousands of feet above Tucson was something even the cops couldn't catch. The first time anyone saw it, it almost crashed into a Customs and Border Protection helicopter at Davis Monthan Air Force Base. That would have been bad. Tucson PD put up their helicopter to find it. According to the police report, the Tucson PD pilot called it a very sophisticated and specialized drone. It had a green light on its belly, but they could never see it, not even with infrared goggles. They chased it all over the city. Here's the flight path of the helicopter. They circled at least 14 times, going 100 miles an hour. Mm -mm. The drone kept evading them, even circling the chopper at that speed. Finally, one of the pilots said the thing went over the top of Mount Lemon, more than 14,000 feet up. That's when the helicopter started running out of gas, but the drone was still going more than an hour later. To understand how bizarre this is, you need a little basic yeah. drone knowledge. Now, this is one of the drones we use here at 12 News. We're only allowed to go 400 feet up in the air, and really right. on its best day, it's only going to go about five miles away from the control station. And no commercially available drone will be able to go more than a half hour without a battery change. <laughs> Whatever Tucson PD saw blew past all of those limits. What you'd be looking at would be a hybrid system. So it'd be something like uh, uh, maybe a, a propane powered electrical generator. Vic Moss is a drone expert with the Drone Service Providers Alliance. Not a we drone expert. police report to check it out. This is not a normal drone. Vic says what this drone did is possible, just very hard and very expensive, like Department of Defense expensive. I would say it's almost a drone that got away from somebody, but there's all kinds of weirdness in that report. The pilots said in their report that they couldn't really see what they were chasing, but with two pilots plus the air traffic controllers, leads Vic to believe the helicopter pilots did not make a mistake. So the credibility of the witnesses, the fact that there was more than one, they probably didn't get it wrong in the fact that something was there and it was probably a drone. So what was it? No one really knows. They went no the drone. The FAA definitely want to know what this was, because if it had hit a helicopter or even a plane, it could have done some major damage. So far, the only thing the FBI is saying is that they're looking for tips. William Pitts, 12 News. Any of y'all own a drone, and why do y'all own a drone? It's funny because when I was looking at the comment section, somebody put a... Uh, dang, what the heck are those called? I didn't forgot what it's called. Let me just show you what they put in the comment section. <laughs> because that's what it looked like when he had that oh that pilot flying in all them circles like that what is this called i'm like blanking out y'all help me out i can't see <laughs> anywho i just i just thought that that was funny but if y'all have a drone why do y'all have it and then how long does it last because they would say it was going so many feet up and it would last for more than an hour you either hacked your drone or that wasn't a drone thank you munchie for the video he sent trying to tell us something while he's giving out a speech at this event he straight up said he hasn't done anything that puffy did i didn't do nothing puffy did <laughs> then said that he was so excited that there was no reason to put something in our drink it was just so, it was just so excitement there's so much excitement that there was no reason for me to put something in our drink oh my God. Just before the other person on stage wanted him to get back to what he was meant to be speaking about, he then said, I need you to remember this multiple times. Let me know your thoughts on this. I need you to remember. 
I need you to remember this. The foundation. Yeah. Thank you, IC, for the video. That dog. <laughs> I'm not like I don't like earthquakes. I'm not a. It's the most scariest thing in the world. Dang, they got cameras everywhere. Oh, she cut his hair. Oh, she stopped. <laughs> okay. That was bad. I do not like earthquakes. If my kids were home, I would think it was them. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. Dang! Uh, oh, oh, that's broke. And the fact that New Jersey has it, like, that state is not known for that. California is known for earthquake. Thank you, Complex, for the video. So yesterday in New York, the Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning. Oh, my mom was Today we had a 4.8 earthquake in Philly, New York, Jersey, and whoever else felt it over here. Now y'all tell me, what's the chance of us having a 4.8 earthquake today? And on Monday, April 8th, 4.8, basically, we supposed to have a solar eclipse. The same solar eclipse that they tell everybody to get prepared for and stack up food for at least two weeks. The same solar eclipse that they send the National Guards out for, for whatever reason. It just so happened on April 8th, that's the same day that they're deciding to test out the biggest machine in the world called CERN. And the CERN logo was literally multiple sixes that look like 666, and in the middle of these sixes, it literally looks like a solar eclipse. And if you don't know what CERN Dang. is, it's literally the biggest machine in the world located in Switzerland, a, literally a portal to hell. I didn't even and know that. And I'm not just making that up, you literally have real scientists that's been down there that have exposed them and literally saying they're making a machine to open up a portal to hell. And they're saying that that's how they communicate with demons. And just so happened in front of this same building, they have a statue of Shiva. Shiva is a false god that represents the destroyer of the universe. And y'all notice how all of a sudden, since the Baltimore Bridge happened, all these other bridges have been collapsed and there's some weird stuff going on with them. As if they're trying to trap people inside the city. So whatever they do have planned to happen, you heard nobody can escape. And I'm not saying nothing spectacular gonna happen on April 8th, but I am saying it's a sign of what's to come. You heard facts, and if you can't see this because you choose not to, we really in the last days. Yeah, it looks like there's a big problem over Texas, y'all. Um, do you guys see this? That's no cloud. Ain't no way that look how big it is. Look, look how far it stretches out, y'all. What is that, y'all? And it goes long. We fund ourselves and then work out what dividend is needed to pay. So um, we kind of work, it's a great business to be in central banking. Um, mm. you print money and people believe it. And, um, <laughs> and, um, Did you hear and, uh, we actually fund ourselves and then work out what dividend is needed to pay. So um, we kind of work, but it's Listen. a great business to be in central banking. Um, mm. you print money and people believe it. And, um, <laughs> and um, Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. He was young? It's been over 25 years. Clearly. A Biggie Smalls verse. It's very valuable. So then what the happened to the commission? What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. Hmm. And then starting his own company. <laughs> It supported all the bad boy. That's real, yo. The more money you make, the more problems you get. I only know of her because so many people have done reactions to her, but I didn't know that she was like a whole artist out here. Like I had to look her name up. Like I can't. Not, I literally thought she just. I don't want to say blew up overnight, but basically. So when I looked up, I'm like, wait, she was a whole singer, or you know what I'm saying? I didn't. I didn't know that she did stuff. So I want to know how did she go? Well, I guess it's just like you in the industry now. And now that you're out of it, now you're able to expose what you kind of witnessed and experienced. But I don't know how long 
like she was in the industry. I didn't grow up on her. Like I said, I don't, I don't know this woman. I'm barely knowing who she is. And I haven't watched any of like her interviews or sit downs, but I know she'd be exposing like a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to her favorite did when Tupac was killed. Well, I know something. The mob don't go there and have a shootout in the front lounge. What make you think black folks could? And who was in the car with him? Quincy Jones, his daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, she was? Okay. How I know that New York Times don't know it? Hmm? How I know that he'd been attempted to be killed so many times, the car is bulletproof. Hmm? So, you had to shoot through a bulletproof car to get him in the head. He was shot in the car. Mm -hmm. hmm? That's what this was about. Hmm? That's what this was about. Shot in the car. Hmm? Oh, that's interesting. I gotta show you how childish the internet is. Look, look at the comments that they put in the comment section. <laughs> yeah, the, the internet is the only place I know that I can make a joke out of anything. What do you think this is? That looks like a dinosaur, doesn't it? How about this one? Bird or dinosaur? This one looks like a bird. It's just one problem. Those two drawings are based on the same skeleton, just posed differently. One pose makes it look more like a dinosaur. The other pose makes it more like a bird. See, we have to be careful with drawings because they can be used to make an animal look like a dinosaur or look like a bird or even look like a missing link. I'll go ahead and end on that lovely note. I do have a question I do want to ask. I want to get you guys' brain going. Do y'all think dinosaurs exist? I'm trying to figure out if I should let you guys know my answer now or if I should say it in the comments. Because that video, I'll be honest, I agree with him. Like, so basically, in other words, y'all got my answer. I would love to know you guys' commentary and thoughts and opinions on that. Y'all gotta let me know in the comment section down below. But I appreciate all you guys that have sent in videos. After a while, if I shout out you out already, it's just one of those, I'm not gonna keep saying your name after every single video, which is why I don't, but y'all know who y'all are as long as I give y'all shout out and y'all credit. Where it's due, that's all that matters. I want to thank you guys in advance for all the people that are gonna be adding to Discord because that's how you're gonna get your videos sent over here and that's how I'm going to react to them and post them on this channel. And I also wanna thank you guys so much for all the love and support I've been getting on the merch, shopperky.com. I truly do appreciate it. Again, if you buy my merch, which a lot of you guys have, can you guys please take a picture and send me the picture or tag me or whatever is easier for you so I can add you onto the website with a whole shout with your at name, like your Instagram or your Twitter, whatever you want on there. But I truly appreciate you guys in advance. On the road to 800K, I am so blessed, grateful, and appreciative. And speaking of blessed, grateful, and appreciative, I want to give all esteem, all glory, and all honor to my Alua Yahuwah and my Adonai Yahusha Hamashiach for blessing me with everything as a whole. I'm just a vessel that they work in and through, so I have to give credit and honor where it is due. Y'all have a blessed one. I'll see you on the next one. Shalom, shalom. You can't bring me down. I know who I belong to. Yeah. Why? I won't sell my soul. I know my worth.